simply learn. Your pace, your place. Hello, and welcome to the FRM Part One Certification Course from Simply Learn. This course is designed for professionals looking at successfully completing Part One of the FRM exam. Let's look at the agenda of this lesson on the next slide. Firstly. Let's have a brief look at the agenda of this lesson. In this lesson, we will first talk about FRM, what it stands for, how this program is structured, and what topics are tested in the FRM exam. Next, we will talk about Simply Learn FRM tutorials, how many lessons we have, the number of practice tests that we provide, and other supporting materials that participants can expect from us. Finally, we will talk about the benefits of going for a certification like FRM and how it can be of help to someone in their career growth. So let's go over to the next slide and learn more about the FRM exam. FRM stands for Financial Risk Manager. It's a designation awarded by a body called Global Association of Risk Professionals (GARP). GARP is a globally recognized body of risk professionals. And FRM is the most coveted professional certification in the field of risk management. The FRM exam is conducted in two parts. In this tutorial, we are going to cover only part one of the syllabus. Both part one and part two are exams with multiple choice questions that last approximately four hours. In part one, there are 100 questions, whereas part two has only 80 questions. Managing risks is one of the most important aspects of any industry. More than the returns, it's the risk which baffles the industry professionals. Financial risk manager certification arms you with all the necessary tools to be part of a niche group of professionals who manage risks. Enrolling in the FRM program is straightforward. Candidates register for the FRM exam online via the GARP website. There are no educational or professional prerequisites to register for the FRM exam. After passing both parts of the FRM exam, a candidate must satisfy a work experience requirement to become certified and start using the FRM designation. FRM candidates must demonstrate a minimum of two years of professional full-time work experience in the area of financial risk management, or another related field, including but not limited to trading. Portfolio management, faculty academic, industry research, economics, auditing, risk consulting, and/or risk technology. The FRM examination is a practice-oriented exam offered by GARP and is designed to assess a candidate's knowledge and understanding of the skills necessary to function effectively as a financial risk manager. The FRM exam is a self-study program. In past exams, the typical successful FRM candidate reports to have studied between 200 to 400 hours. The exact amount of time that is appropriate for any specific candidate will, however, vary from candidate to candidate, depending on factors such as work experience and knowledge base of risk management and finance. On an annual basis, GARP's FRM committee, comprised of prominent global risk management professionals, And academics establishes the topic areas to be tested in the FRM exam. The FRM exam consists of two parts that are both offered twice a year on the third Saturday of May and November. Part one is an equally weighted 100-question multiple-choice exam offered in the morning of the exam day, and part two is an equally weighted 80-question multiple-choice exam offered in the afternoon of the exam day. The syllabus of FRM Part One, as well as FRM Part Two, is listed on the slide. Please take a moment to look at it. The FRM exam is a practice-oriented exam, firmly grounded in the skills and knowledge needed for today's complex financial landscape. Part One of the FRM examination covers the fundamental tools and techniques used in risk management, and the theories that underlie their use. Specific areas of coverage and their weighting in terms of percentage of questions asked in the exam are as listed on the slide. It covers four modules discussed in detail in the next slide. There are four broad areas that are tested in the FRM Part One exam. 
The first area is foundations of risk management. The foundations of risk management area focuses on candidates' knowledge of foundational concepts of risk management, and how risk management can add value to an organization. The next area to be tested in the exam is quantitative analysis. The quantitative analysis area tests a candidate's knowledge of basic probability and statistics, regression and time series analysis, and various quantitative techniques used in risk management. The financial markets and products area tests the candidate's knowledge of financial products and the markets in which they trade. The fourth and last part of the syllabus are about valuation and risk models. This area tests a candidate's knowledge of valuation techniques and risk models. The foundations of risk management area focuses on a candidate's knowledge of foundational concepts of risk management and how risk management can add value to an organization. An understanding of the trade-off between risk and return, the construction of efficient portfolios, fundamental asset pricing models, and enterprise risk management frameworks are covered in this section. The quantitative analysis area tests a candidate's knowledge of basic probability and statistics, regression and time series analysis, and various quantitative techniques useful in risk management, such as Monte Carlo methods, volatility forecasting models. And value at risk estimation. The financial markets and products area tests the candidate's knowledge of financial products and the markets in which they trade, including equities, commodities, currencies, fixed income, equity options, and other derivatives. A basic understanding of arbitrage arguments related to the valuation of financial products in these markets is also tested. The valuation and risk models area will test a candidate's knowledge of valuation techniques and risk models. This section includes coverage of basic bond valuation, valuation using binomial trees, and an understanding of the Black Scholes Merton model. Risk models and techniques such as value at risk, the contingent claims approach to measuring risk, expected and unexpected loss estimation, and stress testing are also covered. Let me give you more insight about the RFM Part One exam now. GARP provides a bundle of guidance and study material on its website to guide and help students structure their efforts for preparation of the exam. At the core of the guidance study material is the AIM statement, which lists all the readings that a student is required to go through, along with the expected aim of each reading. The next is the study guide, which sets forth primary topics and subtopics covered in the FRM exam. The study guide also contains a full listing of all of the readings that are recommended as preparation for the FRM examination. GARP also provides an exam preparation handbook to candidates to assist them in their preparation for the FRM examination by suggesting strategies for completing the reading material outlined in the FRM study guide. And the FRM AIM statements documents. The three guides discussed till now, AIM statements, study guide, and exam preparation handbook, are available for free at the GARP website. To facilitate your exam preparation, all of the readings listed and described in the FRM study guide are available through GARP in a combined book format. This combined book is in four volumes and could be purchased by students. Through GARP online, it is not compulsory for students to acquire those readings. We will also discuss in detail about the Simply Learn tutorial in the next slide. As we have already discussed in the previous slide, the Part One exam is four hours long with 100 multiple choice questions. It is important to note that there are no negative marks for the wrong answers. Hence, you may answer even the questions you are not able to solve. A very important point to be noted is that you can use calculators in the exam. Some questions have lengthy calculations and could only be solved using a calculator. However, GARP prescribes the calculator that you can take into the exam room, and no other types of calculator will be allowed. If you bring in any other type of calculator, it is considered a violation of the code. Exam results are pass or fail and are released via email approximately six weeks after the exam is administered, with quartile results that enable them to see how they scored on specific areas related to other candidates.
In the last slide, we discussed the guidance material made available by GARP for FRM candidates. Although simple to understand, we will explain what you find in the AIM statement and how to interpret it. The AIM statement and study guide list the complete set of readings that you are required to go through to successfully clear the FRM Part 1 exam. This slide shows you the first chapter of the FRM Part 1 AIM statement. Let us have a look at it. The AIM statement's first part includes the name of the book from which the reading has been adapted. In this example, the reading is Need for Risk Management, which is Chapter 1 from the third edition of Philippe Jorion's book, Value at Risk. The new benchmark for managing financial risk. The book was published in 2007 in New York by McGraw Hill. The AIM statement further describes the expected learning outcome you will have once you go through the subject chapter of the book. Let us look at the example again. It explains that once you have an exhaustive reading of the chapter, you should be able to define risk and describe some of the major sources of risk and differentiate between business and financial risks. It is advised to you that after going through each reading, you should review the AIM statement to examine whether you have actually acquired the desired knowledge. You can download the FRM AIM statement at the link shown at the bottom of the slide. Let us now discuss how we will prepare you for the exam. The Simply Learn tutorial for Part 1 exam consists of more than 45 lessons to assist you in your preparation for the exam. A complete list of tutorials will be discussed in the next slide. The lessons are divided based on readings prescribed by the GARP FRM committee. We have discussed the readings in the last slide. Each reading, as per the prescribed curriculum, is covered in a separate lesson. Each lesson will comprehensively prepare you for that particular reading. Lessons are also supported by examples and concepts explained in the Excel spreadsheets are designed and based on simple examples to explain important principles and concepts. Grasping the learning becomes much easier through these Excel spreadsheets. As part of the tutorial, you will have access to all the lessons and Excel sheets. Also, we will provide you with six sets of question papers to enhance your preparation for the exam. All of the question papers are based on the actual exam pattern. You are expected to answer these question papers in a sitting of four hours each, as you would have to for the exam requirements. Answering these question papers will prepare you for the actual exam scenario. You'll be provided with an explanation for each question to help you further understand the solution and to give your feedback on the mistakes you make. All the modules are continuously updated based on feedback provided by students to make them more relevant to your needs, make them more intuitive and to make them in-depth as per the updated FRM curriculum. Let us now have a look at the complete list of tutorials that you will have at your disposal through the Simply Learn FRM Part 1 program. The list is as per the desired reading list covered in the FRM Part 1 AIM statement. As already discussed in detail in previous slides, the curriculum is divided into four parts. Foundations of Risk Management, Quantitative Analysis, Financial Markets and Products, and Valuation and Risk Models. Each part will have several lessons as per the exhibited list. <laughs> well, during this discussion, at some point a question on why should one go for FRM certification may have crossed your mind. Let's look at the answer for this question here. The FRM certification, as the globally recognized professional designation for financial risk managers, clearly differentiates you from your peers providing you with a competitive advantage with colleagues, clients and prospective employers. Whether you manage risk, money or investments, achieving the FRM certification is a career enhancer. Employers around the world realize that the FRM program prepares candidates with the specialized knowledge and skills necessary to succeed in the dynamic financial services industry. The FRM designation is by far the best known and most respected designation for financial risk, with 46 of the top 50 banks in the world having a significant presence of certified FRMs. Requiring the successful completion of a rigorous two-part practice-oriented examination, 
the financial risk manager designation provides a bedrock foundation in a profession and industry that is rapidly evolving. Since the FRM's program's inception in 1997, certified FRMs have achieved positions such as chief risk officer, senior risk analyst, head of operational risk, and director of investment risk management, to name a few. The global FRM community is growing dramatically, with certified FRMs represented at nearly every major banking institution, government regulator, consulting firm, and financial services institution around the world. Let's discuss about the opportunities for FRM certified professionals in the next slide. The FRM designation creates opportunities for a diverse set of candidates to accelerate their careers. No matter what their backgrounds, professionals who manage risk, money, or investments and want to broaden their knowledge of the different types of financial risk enter the FRM program in order to enhance their current skill set. Career changers, such as those previously working in non-risk roles, become candidates for the FRM designation in order to broaden their opportunities by gaining specialized, practical knowledge in an area of financial services. That is continuing to grow rapidly across the globe. Students realize that achieving the FRM designation demonstrates to future employers that they are able to master complex real-world challenges, since the FRM exam is practitioner-driven. It also provides their commitment to purchasing a career in managing risk, money, or investments. Now that you've understood all about the exam structure. And why you should go for FRM certification? We will show you some of the facts about the FRM 2011 examination in this slide. This slide will give you an idea about the widening scope and importance of FRM examination. In 2011, FRM candidates came from 129 different countries, with a total of 26,527 registrations for the exam. The top ten countries or regions with the most FRM candidates are China, India, the U.S., Hong Kong, South Korea, Canada, United Kingdom, Singapore, Taiwan, and Switzerland. The GARP website states that 91% of candidates who sat for the November 2011 FRM exam would recommend that their colleagues also sit for the FRM exam. Last but not least. This slide shows you the top 20 companies employing the most certified FRMs. Take a time to look at the employers. It is evident from this slide that some of the most prestigious and sought-after employers prefer FRM certified professionals for managing risks in their organizations. Companies are increasingly recognizing the need to have FRM certified professionals on their staff. This is the end of this session. Let us do a quick review of what we covered in this lesson. We discussed in detail about the FRM exam pattern. To acquire FRM certification, you must pass both Part One and Part Two of the FRM exam, and have two years of relevant risk management experience. Part One and Part Two are exams with multiple choice questions that last approximately four hours. In Part One, there are 100 questions, whereas Part Two. Has only 80 questions. There are no negative marks for the wrong answers. Part one of the FRM examination covers foundations of risk management, quantitative analysis, financial markets and products, and valuation and risk models. Next, we discussed the Simply Learn tutorial for the FRM Part One exam, and how the tutorials will guide you for the exam. After the exam pattern and structure. We discussed why it is important for you to take the exam, what career benefits FRM certification could provide, and how it could change your career path. In the next session, we will discuss the first reading, the need for risk management from Chapter One of Philippe Durian's book Value at Risk, the new benchmark for managing financial risks. Before the next session, you are expected to go through the FRM AIM statement. The study guide and the exam preparation handbook. It should only take a maximum of two hours to go through the guidance materials.